in the last class we had seen how the phase lock loop works as a phase follower. We said if phi i is the input phase, phi naught is the output phase, phi i minus phi naught being the phase detector input, then output of the phase detector is going to be a DC average which corresponds to KPD into phi i minus phi naught. So, this is KPD into phi i minus phi naught. This would respond to this amplifier and low pass filter. So, A naught KPD to phi i minus phi naught okay, divided by 1 plus S by omega LP. That is the voltage here. That this is going to have a sensitivity of A naught and omega LP is the low pass filter cutoff frequency. Here we have a sensitivity of KVCO. So, this voltage is going to be multiplied by KVCO divided by S yes, because it is responding to phase and therefore, that is itself equal to phi naught. From that we got phi naught by phi i is 1 by 1 plus 1 over g where g is the loop gain. And phi naught by phi i is same as omega naught by omega i that if it is a phase follower it is also a frequency follower okay? because of the linear relationship between phi naught and omega naught. Now, this is equal to 1 by 1 plus s by k l where k l is nothing but the DC loop gain which is K V C O K P D A naught that is entire sensitivity factors product of sensitivity factors within this loop. So, 1 plus S by K L plus S squared by K L omega L P. So, this is a basically phase lock loop is a second order system second order system with natural frequency equal to root of k l omega l p or actually we have been writing natural frequency as omega naught and we can write down this as 1 by 1 plus s squared by omega naught squared then this is s by omega naught into q to the normal way we write the second order system. So, omega naught is quickly identified as root of k l into omega l p. That means, if k l is high, the loop gain is high, omega naught is going to be high. But of course, omega l p may be low, so that omega naught is going to be much less than the uh, what is that k l itself. Q on the other hand of this circuit is going to be omega naught Q is going to be equal to K L by comparison and therefore, Q is going to be K L by omega naught which is root of K L omega L p which means it is root of K L by omega L p. So, a good phase lock loop will invariably a high Q circuit because K L is the loop gain and that has to be made large in all these control systems. So, root of K L by omega L p is normally going to be very high and therefore, a good phase lock loop is a natural second order system whose poles are already very near the imaginary axis. Why I am stressing this is because additional phase shift within the loop will make it become unstable and therefore, we have to be extremely careful not to put anything other than a first order low pass within the loop. Okay? If you want to filter it better, you must not put it in within the loop, you must put this always outside the loop. Okay? So, this is something that we have to be always aware of in phase lock loop that since it is a basic second order system with high pole Q we will not put anything that will further increase the phase shift within this. Now, this particular thing 
if you obtain its response as a function of omega this that is either uh, let us say phi naught by phi i magnitude it will be where this is the natural frequency of the system which is nothing but root of k l omega l p and this is 1. That means actually in a good phase lock loop actually this is also omega naught by omega l. In a good phase lock loop we must always work much below this so that it exactly does the Fourier phase following output phase change is same as input phase change or output change in frequency is same as input change in frequency. We should not work in this frequency range. This is again important that this frequency that we are talking of is this frequency which has been permitted to pass through in the low pass filter, which means it is the frequency with which this so called average is changing. Okay. So, that is something that we have to bear in mind. Frequency with which the average of this is changing is the frequency that we are mentioning here. Okay. Or the frequency with which the phase is changing. Okay. So, that frequency is what we are talking of. Now, we have now established that a phase follower is automatically a frequency follower. Now, let us see what exactly happens if this particular thing, which is nothing but a multiplier, is not given any input. So, there is no input at all, what happens? So, we are discussing the situation of phase lock loop under quiescent conditions that nothing is being fed to the phase detector input. Of course, it is getting one input from VCO because it has two inputs. This is a multiplier as I told you if this is omega 1 and this is omega 2 there will be a component omega 1 minus omega 2 and omega 1 plus omega 2 here. So, because this is a multiplier we have if this as omega 2 the component omega 2 will be present here. That being a very high frequency component nothing is permitted to come out of the amplifier plus low pass filter component. And therefore, the VCO remains at its quiescent state because this input does not change. Therefore, this continues to run at what is called as free running frequency of the phase lock loop. So, this continues to run at omega 2. So, that frequency at which the phase lock loop is running when no input is fed is called the free running frequency of the phase lock loop or quiescent frequency of the phase lock loop. Once again, let me go through. Phase detector is a multiplier. If there are two frequency components here, here let us say omega 1 and omega 2, this will give you omega 1 minus omega 2 and omega 1 plus omega 2. It is omega 1 minus omega 2 which might be passed through because it may become a low frequency, but omega 1 plus omega 2 may not be passed through. Here, since it is only omega 2 that is existing, that omega 2 may appear here and therefore, it will not pass through the low pass filter and nothing happens to the VCO output. VCO continues to run at the free running frequency and therefore, that is called the free running frequency of the PLL. We will call it as omega naught quiescent. Now, let us apply an input frequency apply an input frequency, please follow me very carefully, which is equal to 
omega naught q. I am going to apply an input frequency which is the same as the free running frequency of the phase lock loop. We have already established earlier that output frequency has to be equal to the input frequency. But here what I am doing is free running frequency is the frequency that I am applying. I just want to see how the phase lock loop now functions. Right? So, since the incoming frequency is already the same as the free running frequency, the output will be twice omega naught q and 0 frequency which means DC. That means, there must be a DC here okay, and twice omega naught q. Twice omega naught q is not going to already we said omega naught q is not be permitted, twice omega naught q is not permitted here. Therefore, this DC which is amplified by A naught should change this DC original DC here of the VCO to some value. If that changes, then this frequency will change. That means, this DC that should occur here because of this should be 0. That is the only possibility. That means, this DC is 0. That means, this DC should be 0. That means, when we have omega naught q as input and omega naught q as output, the DC average should be 0. In our phase detector, we have seen that such a phase occurs that is when the two incoming frequencies are of the same value, there can be a phase difference between the two waveforms. That phase difference has to be equal to pi by 2 in order to have the average equal to 0, because in the multiplier it was uh, V p sin omega 1 t, V p sin omega 2 t divided by 10, which means it is going to respond to omega 1 minus omega 2, which is in this case okay, omega uh, phi, because omega 1 is equal to omega 2, but the, there is a phase difference. So, cos phi is the average. If cos phi is 0, phi has to be 90 degrees. That means, if the incoming frequency is the same as the free running frequency, the phase difference between these two will be automatically set by this loop to be 90 degree. That is the quiescent phase shift. Please understand that this is the quiescent phase shift at which the DC average here must be 0 in order that this is not changing from its quiescent in order that this should continue to free run at omega naught q. So, phi i minus phi naught or the phase difference in this case of omega i equal to omega naught q, this should be equal to pi by 2. It is an important point that you should understand in a phase lock loop. Okay. Now, that is why we have designed our phase detector so that its quiescent phase shift is corresponding to pi by 2. Okay. Next, if I now slowly change this omega i around omega naught q, what should happen? So, let us now consider the situation of omega i being slowly changed around omega naught q. Originally, it was at omega naught q. At that point, this particular voltage, let us say, this is called, let us say, V c, control voltage. The control voltage was at a value V c q for the V c o. As omega i is changed, to some value which is close to omega naught q, immediately this will follow. If this follows, what should be the V c? That will be nothing but omega naught q 
minus omega i divided by k v c u because this is defined as the sensitivity. So, if this has gone over from omega naught q to omega i which is different from omega naught q then the change in frequency is omega naught q minus omega i that divided by k v c o should be the d c voltage here. So, you can see that omega naught q minus omega i divided by k v c o should be the d c here. So, that means you can see this apart from v c q okay, when omega i is equal to omega naught q it was v c q itself there is an additional voltage that is coming here. If omega i for example, is less than omega naught q this is higher if it is greater than omega naught q this voltage is lower. So, there is going to be a, a sort of slope like this. linear because this is my uh, slope is uh, minus 1 over k v c o. Okay. So, this v c versus this frequency is going to be perfectly linear that means, as I change omega i omega naught is going to follow omega i in a linear fashion like this okay, such that v c is a linear curve. Now, once again let us come to this. This has changed over to a DC above V C by an extent equal to omega i minus omega uh, that is omega naught q minus omega i by k V C o. This has changed over to a DC which is that divided by A naught. That DC is the average okay, of the phase detector output. Frequencies are now again the same. So, there is an average component okay, which is going to be equal to this d c divided by a naught. That average is the result of a certain phase shift which is other than pi by 2. So, that means, the phase shift now starts changing from pi by 2 to some other value. Okay. This can go on until let us say ours is a linear phase detector. Okay. If you assume that ours is a linear phase detector uh, with this, this kind of characteristic that we had earlier found out may be something like this at pi by 2 it is 0 and this is at 0 and this is at pi. So, this is at 0 phase shift. So, around pi by 2 this is the average so this phase shift will now change by some amount it can go on changing until what happens the phase shift becomes ultimately at this point zero thereafter again our phase detector is not capable of detecting the phase again this is not possible beyond pi. A phase detector is capable of detecting a phase change of pi by 2 on either side of this pi by 2. So, it can go on up to 0 and it can go on up to pi. What does it mean in terms of this? That means, this d c is going to be this much above this value or this much below this value. Correspondingly, above we see it will be a times that and below that again a times that. So, this v c o is going to be varying around omega naught q up to a certain limit on this side and up to another limit on this side. Therefore, this range of frequencies is called the lock range of the phase lock. This range within which the phase lock loop is going to track the incoming frequency as I vary the incoming frequency it will follow the incoming frequency. This range 
the limit from this value to this value is called the log range. Now, how can we determine the log range? It is very simple. If the phase detector phase okay, output here changes to a maximum of pi by 2, then what is the maximum voltage here? If this is kpd, the slope of this is kpd, this voltage is nothing but kpd into pi by 2. If this sensitivity is kpd and it is linear, then the maximum voltage that is given by the phase detector corresponds to kpd into pi by 2. That is the maximum voltage. That into A naught is the maximum voltage that it can have here. As long as the amplifier is not getting saturated before it reaches this voltage, this is the voltage it is likely to be reached. This into KVCO, the sensitivity of this, is the maximum frequency deviation from omega naught q it can reach on either side of omega naught q. So, this is the lock range from omega naught q on this side and this on this side. So, this we will call it as delta omega L. So, this limit is omega naught q minus delta omega L. This is omega naught q plus delta omega L or the lock range is 2 delta omega L. Delta omega L being equal to K P D A naught K C B C O which we have already defined as being equal to K L the D C loop gain. So, it is nothing but K L into pi by 2. It is a very simple uh, expression. The lock range of a phase lock loop is nothing but the DC loop gain into pi by 2. Okay? So, that is the delta omega L. That into of course, 2 is the lock range 2 delta omega L on either side of omega naught q. So, this only if condition for this is only if amplifier does not go satura to saturation before that and VCO continues to free run up to that frequency without any problem. That means, these ranges here of VCO and amplifier should not be limiting the lock range lower than this. Otherwise, these ones will limit the lock range. Okay? This is the maximum possible lock range for this. If these two do not go to their limits. Otherwise, this will fix up the lock range. Right? Let us say VCO is capable of going maximum of this frequency and minimum of this frequency. Then that will limit the lock range if it is lower than this. Right? So, this information about lock range is very important. This is like our uh, limit for the voltage output voltage for the op amp power supply it can go almost up to the power supply like that there is this uh, dynamic range limitation for the phase lock loop it goes out of lock beyond this right it is not going to be kept in lock if you have understood this then we will also try to understand another important concept associated with the phase lock loop. Once again, let us emphasize this fact. The phase lock loop was free running at omega naught q, when nothing was connected to it. Then I connected okay, an incoming frequency which was equal to omega naught q. It is equivalent to my saying that I want to take you to canteen, you are engaged busily here in the class listening to the lecture. So, I come to the class and call you Mr. Ramaswamy, let us go to the canteen. I go very close to him, take his attention, draw his attention and then say we will go to the canteen. Right? 
He says, I can come with you to any place because that is the whole thing. Now I have come close to him, right? I can now keep his attention all along to any place, okay? Let us say it is the limit is within the campus, IIT campus. So I can take him anywhere around the campus without any problem. He is all the time along with me. That is the lock range. Now, obviously, you can now understand there is some problem. Suddenly, okay, the attention is lost, right? Some disturbance occurs and we two are separated, right? Now, I have to capture the interest of Ramaswamy before I can take him anywhere. This is important. Therefore, if I say that it is free running at omega naught q and omega i is not equal to omega naught q to start with, there is a problem of capture. Okay? The problem of capture does not arise okay, if I have started very close to him, right? straight away. If omega i is equal to omega naught q, I have already captured his interest and I can take him anywhere. Suppose to start with omega i is not equal to omega naught q. It is far away from omega naught q. Obviously, I am far away. He is in this place. Until I am able to somehow capture his interest, okay? lots of things. He is listening to the lecture. It may be more important for him than the other activities. right? So, it becomes very difficult for me to capture his interest. Another thing is his hearing power, strength. right? My power of communication. right? All these things are important. That means, strength of the signal is important factor. How close I am to him is important. right? Whether I am able to capture his interest okay, is another thing that is important. That means exactly similar thing happens in the phase of case of phase lock loop. If omega i is far away from omega naught q, this omega i minus omega naught q is the distance. What does it mean in terms of circuit? If omega i is far away from omega naught q, omega i minus omega naught q, omega i plus omega naught q both will be high frequency components. You understand this? If omega i is far away from omega naught q, omega i minus omega naught q, omega i plus omega naught q, both are high frequencies, which will be rejected by the low pass filter. Nothing happens here. He will continue to do whatever he was doing earlier, as though nothing has happened at the input. So, capture has not taken place. His attention has not been drawn. Until capture takes place, I cannot have lock. So, the process of capture precedes the process of locking. Right? So, I come slowly closer and closer. I am coming, I can either come from here or come from that. That is, it is of no consequence as long as I am far away from this place, whether I am coming from this side or that side, it is of no significance. Both will produce the same type of components. Right? Now, when omega i is close to omega naught q, such that the low pass filter cutoff frequency omega l p okay, is permitting something to appear here, then this will start responding to the input. But if it just responds to the input, it is not sufficient. What has happened? I have become, I have come close to him, but he does not know exactly what I am telling. Right? He is not able to hear. He is seeing me talking to him, but he is not able to hear. So, he is sometimes listening to the lecture, sometimes looking to him, okay, trying to make out what he is trying to say. Right? So, that means this particular thing really does not know what to do. Okay? This has not elicited much response from here. Now, obviously, 
at this juncture, right, we have to talk of what is the probability of capture and when does it occur. Right? When will really this omega i starts responding, um, starts getting response from output of VCO in such a manner that this becomes ultimately equal to omega i. Okay. Now, for that we have to again go for theory of probability. I can tell you uh, about one test that they carried out on chimpanzee. Okay. Chimpanzee is supposed to be very intelligent, almost as intelligent or maybe more intelligent than human beings. So, they had put the chimpanzee in a cage. Okay. This is our chimpanzee. Right. The goal is, will the chimpanzee think originally? Okay. There, is, there was a rope hung from a sort of pulley here and a man was standing there, right, trying to sort of swing this, right, up and down. There is a lot of banana, okay, tied to this. So, the chimpanzee is trying to catch these banana, right? No. This is hung like this. Obviously, this is at a great height. So, chimpanzee is making an attempt. Now, it knows that, right, this particular thing it must capture, but it has its own limitations. It can only jump up to a certain point. Now, how does it know that it is going to capture or not? It will do it by trial and error. It takes a risk, it will jump and see. Obviously, when this is at a great height, right, this cannot reach. That it will gradually come to know, right, after jumping several times. That is what happens here. Omega i minus omega naught q has become low enough to elicit some response here. And this is changing around this quiescent. That is, it is equivalent to the monkey jumping, right? But not reaching still, right? That is because the monkey is not able to jump up to this point. Now, in this experiment, these people did something, right? They started, obviously, they do not want to frustrate the monkey, right? So, they started swinging this up and down like this. So, meanwhile, this monkey has experimented upon, right, how to jump, at what time it should jump. Now, all of you know, right, I am sure you are better than monkeys in thinking about it. Once this swing is, right, there, this monkey is, a, is likely to capture the banana when the maximum jump of this monkey, okay, is such that the minimum swing, the point of swing comes to the minimum and there is an overlap. right? So, that means, this is going to be higher than this. right? Then, also it need not capture because it depends upon the timing. The likelihood of capture is going to be good when the minimum of this here is just coinciding with the maximum of the jump of the monkey. Now, let us translate it to okay, something electrical here. Obviously, this quiescent frequency is going to change, okay? because if this is a uh, sine wave uh, here, sine wave or some wave which is changing on either side of the quiescent, the voltage here is going to change higher as well as lower. That means, this frequency is going to change higher and lower. So, this particular free running frequency is going to be changed around its value to a higher value and a lower value. If 
for example, omega i is higher than omega naught q, the highest value this reaches when it is swinging, when it becomes equal to the incoming frequency, the probability of capture is good. Is that understood? The whole phenomenon of capture is again nonlinear because please understand the moment this particular frequency changes, I cannot consider this any longer that it is changing around omega naught q. At every instant of time, this will be changing, coming closer to omega i and going away from omega i also. And correspondingly, this frequency is not a single frequency, it is also a change in frequency. So, it is not possible to explain this until you accept the fact that this omega naught q is the Cohesion frequency and around this point it is going to change okay, on either side equally. Okay. All are assumptions which are not really valid okay, strictly, but the probability of capture is going to be high only when the swing from the coherent here is such that it reaches at a some instant of time the incoming frequency. Right? So, that is roughly going to be the capture range on either side of omega naught q. So, if this is the lock range, in fact, when I am coming from here, right, let us say at that frequency, this capture has just occurred, then immediately it will lock to the incoming frequency and it can go on like this it will go out of lock here. Then when I come from this side, I have to come pretty close to omega naught q as much close to omega naught q as on the other side. So, it will get locked to this and it can go on remaining locked. So, this is the way if you come from these two sides, the response is going to be. Let us once again go through the thing. When I am coming from lower frequency end, it will get captured at a certain point and then it will remain captured or remain under lock up to the end of the lock range, goes out of lock. Then when I come back here, it will again get captured at this point and it will remain captured up to this point. Now, this phenomena being highly complex, there is one way we can obtain the capture range fairly approximately. That is this monkey technique, right? It is a fairly good approximation, right? Almost okay, uh, to about 10 to 20 percent accuracy, you can predict the capture range by this and that is good enough for us. More exact versions are discussed very in a very detailed manner by a book by Gardner on phase lock flow. So, let us see how capture range can be explained. So, we were explaining about capture range and we can depict the whole situation in the following manner. Omega i is inputted to the phase detector and let us imagine that we have a VCO whose VCQ is kept constant okay, at quiescent and it is uh, having free running frequency as output frequency omega naught q. Then we can say that there is going to be an output here. It is not going to be in this phase detector. Output is going to be now omega i minus omega naught q and omega i plus omega naught q. So, I, it is not a square uh, wave or anything like that. Okay? It is a uh, waveform whose frequency is changing. right? But out of that, we want to take only the lower frequency component omega i minus omega naught q. I am assuming for practical purposes that it is responding to only the sine wave part of the lower frequency which is also not correct strictly because it is a, a limit uh, amplitude limited waveform. Okay. So, let us assume the peak amplitude of this is V p and it is a sine wave whose frequency is omega i minus omega naught q t. This is purely an assumption because otherwise it is a fairly complex waveform. 
okay, which has to be split into its uh, uh, individual components and then see the output due to each component. Right? But we know that it is to this component that it is going to respond the maximum, right? the lowest frequency component. Other higher harmonic of this will not result in much response from the low pass filter. Right? So, we will take only that. So, this is the assumption. If this is the output here, some peak voltage into sine omega i minus omega naught q into t, then the low pass filter output will be V p divided by 1 plus omega by omega L p whole square. What is the omega? Omega is this frequency omega i minus omega naught q whole square under the root sin omega i minus omega naught q into t plus some psi phase. We are not interested in that. So, this is the output if sine wave input is given to a low pass filter with uh, this kind of cutoff frequency. This into A naught amplifier gain. So, you can see that you get a sine wave here whose peak amplitude goes up to A naught into V p divided by this superimposed over what V naught q. Okay. So, this will be V naught q plus A naught V p divided by root of 1 plus omega i minus omega naught q squared by omega L p squared into sin omega i minus omega naught q t plus psi. What does it mean? We are not again interested in all that. It might vary exactly sine wave wise or this. The peak amplitude is going to change from V naught q plus this value and V naught q minus this value. Okay. What will this do? This will start swinging from okay, this to K V C O okay, omega naught q plus K V C O into A naught into V P. Okay. The same thing sin of that divided by root of that. So, that means omega naught q plus this value and omega naught q minus this value it will go. Right? Once again this sine factor is of no interest to us. It is just that omega naught q plus some value omega naught q. This is an important thing. That means imagine that the moment omega i is applied this is now swinging. Okay? This has already started swinging around omega naught q on either side of omega naught q. What is capture range? capture range is that when this omega naught q plus this if it is higher becomes exactly equal to omega i or omega naught q minus this if it is lower becomes equal to omega i. Is this clear? So, that means when omega i becomes equal to omega naught q okay, plus or minus it does right? this value k v c o a naught v p divided by root of 1 plus omega i minus omega naught q squared by omega l p squared. Is this understood? Right? So, this you can call as omega i limit capture frequency this is then also the capture frequency right omega i so in our curve here we can say that around omega naught q it is this on this side and this on this side this is omega okay naught q 
omega naught q plus minus delta omega c this is omega naught q plus delta omega c and it is 2 delta omega c which is the capture range and that is given roughly by an approximation as this. And what is V p? V p is the peak voltage possible at the output of the phase detector, which is also if the phase detector is linear nothing but k p d into pi by 2. Okay. The peak voltage possible peak change possible at the output of the phase detector is nothing but k p d into pi by 2. So, this is nothing but k p d into pi by 2. So, let us write it down omega i c minus omega naught q you take this this side which is called as delta omega c by us okay, is equal to plus or minus okay, k v c o a naught k p d into pi by 2. What is that? k v c o a naught k p d into pi by 2 is already defined by us if you remember as delta omega L. This whole thing is delta omega L. Okay. So, that divided by root of 1 plus delta omega c whole squared by omega L p squared or we will rewrite this delta omega c equals okay, plus or minus delta omega L divided by root of 1 plus delta omega c by omega L p whole square. This is the equation which you have to solve in order to obtain delta omega c. Unknown is delta omega c. Delta omega l is already known, omega l p is known. So, you will get delta omega c in terms of omega l p and delta omega l. Now, you can imagine that the capture range is always less than the lock range. Let us consider the situation where capture range is much delta omega c e by omega L p okay, is okay, much greater than 1. Then this one can be ignored. Okay and this becomes delta omega c equal delta omega L divided by delta omega c to omega L p or delta omega c equals root of delta omega L into omega L p becomes very simple. Otherwise, you have to solve a quadratic equation. If this assumption is valid, so the best thing is assume that this is so, find out delta omega c, check whether this assumption is valid. Okay? If this assumption is not valid, then then you go and solve this. Right? So, capture range is root of log range into low pass filter cutoff frequency. Right? So, you will see that this is uh, an important aspect of phase lock loop design. The capture range can be made very narrow okay, around omega naught q, so that it does not capture at all okay, other frequencies around omega naught q. But once it captures, it can keep itself under lock okay, for a wide range of frequency. Such a characteristic of the phase lock loop finds itself in variety of applications okay, in communications and controls. This we will discuss in the next class.